Hello guys, um, let's continue talking about time series analysis and forecasting. And first of all, let's review some of the uh, contents we went over in the last video. Let's start with uh, uh, some important elements in the forecasting. First one is a quantitative uh, approach to forecasting. That's where uh, that's the main tool we utilize to understand the forecasting. Also, we're going to take a look at the components. So we have four components or four elements in the time series analysis. And we're going to look into uh, each one of them again, okay? and then measure the forecasting error. Now we have a couple index we can use to measure the forecasting accuracy. Also, we're going to take a look at exponential smoothing methods. Uh, smoothing methods, and we're going to look at the trim projection and a seasonal component, both as well as regression analysis. And uh, we're going to touch lightly on the quant qualitative approach. Okay, so let's start on the... So this roadmap actually shows us uh, um, different branches of the forecasting methods. Now we're going to focus on the quantitative methods, especially on the time series analysis. So we have smoothing methods, that's the number one method. Second one is the trend projection. And also the trend projection with the seasonal component or seasonal influence. So those three are the major tools under the time series analysis. Okay, so and the quantitative method, it's basically um, an analysis of historical data concerning one or more time series. So basically, we work with the historical data or past data, use past data to predict future values. Let's come to the method. So a typical time series is a set of observations or data measured at a uh, successive points in time or over a certain period of time. And if the historical data used uh, restricted past values of the series, we are trying to forecast the procedure is called time series method. If the historical data used involve other time series that are be believed to be related to the time series that, are, that we are trying to forecast, the procedure is called causal methods. And there are three different methods we are using, smoothing method, trend projection, or trend analysis. The third one is trend projection adjusted for seasonal component. Now again, there are four basic elements in the time series analysis. First one is trend component. So there's upward trend. Like overall pattern, upward trend, a downward trend. Those two are the major branches for trend component. So also have a cyclical. So it's like something like a cycle, right? It has a cycle um, year after year, so cycle effect. So is seasonality, right? So some, sometimes in the during holiday season. So they reach the peak, right? the sales reach the peak. And an irregular component mainly goes to like uh, those unexpected events in the history or like almost like a recession, for example, could be a recession um, or natural disaster. More like a war. Well, those are the irregular components have major impact on the um, time series data. So the trend component, uh, first of all, uh, accounts for the gradual shifting in the upward or downward. So just two major um, topics here. 
And change usually is a result of long-term factors, such as changing population. So let's say population increases, then the sales usually goes up or goes down. Depends on the nature of the business. But demographic changes, meaning if the uh, there's a shipment of the population from one, let's say, town to another town, or maybe one city to another city, that causes big changes in the in the trend. Also, the technology change or consumer preferences that also um, have impact on the trend component. And cyclical component, uh, basically, we see a regular like cycle. Um, so year after year, if you see that as a cyclical component, and as cyclical component usually is is due to the multiple multiple year cyclical movement in the economy. Um, so if the economy keeps growing, then the, we're going to see an upward cyclical component, uh, something like this, like in our uh, time series data. And the second one is a seasonal component. Uh, the seasonal component accounts for regular patterns of variability within certain time periods, such, such as one year. Um, so within a year, maybe um, from winter, you know, that's peak time, right? So this is the winter, that's winter and spring, and maybe summer, and fall, right? Something like that. Summer and fall. Okay. So variability does not always cor corresponds with the season of the year. It depends on the nature of the business. Uh, but the most business during the winter time usually reach the peak, right? And then it's gradually go down in the spring, and then pick up maybe in the summer, and then go down in the fall, something like that. Um, so also uh, it could be. Uh, important seasonal behavior could be within weeks or within days, something like um, between Christmas to New Year. That's important time period for a lot of retail business between Christmas and New Year. Usually during the time of the sale to reach the peak, right, in that period. So this is a uh, a very uh, typical seasonal behavior uh, in, the, in the retail business. And also irregular component, as I mentioned, is a short-term unexpected of non-occurring factors or events. Uh, for example, like a war, like the um, recession, or economic downturn, also like something like natural disaster. And it's usually unpredictable, it's just one-time event but it have a significant impact on the time series data or like the sales. So we're using a couple benchmark to capture the forecast uh, accuracy. Right? One of them is called mean square error. Let just rewrite it as MSV. So the average of a square forecast error for the historical data is calculated forecasting method of parameters and minimize the mean square error. So basically it's um, the square error of yt minus ft. yt represent observed observed data, ft is the forecast data, square that. And we'll try to minimize this. Sum the square root of that. Minimize this component. And the smaller it is, the better your forecast is. <laughs> Meaning your forecast is more accurate. We also use the mean absolute de deviations. Um, so the mean of the absolute value of all forecast errors is calculated in the forecasting method of parameters, minimize the measure is selected. Again, so it's still minimizing the, the mean absolute deviation. So something like this, minimize mean absolute deviation. So absolute. Okay, so we'll try to minimize this. The mean absolute deviation measures less sensitive to large forecast errors than the mean square errors. 
Um, so if you suspect there's a large forecast error, you should always go with the mean square error um, index to, cap to measure the forecasting accuracy. Now we're going to go to um, look, look at detailed calculation in a second, how to calculate the mean square error in one of the examples later. Um, so smoothing methods, we have three general smoothing methods. Um, first one is moving average. We already talked about that in the last video. Secondly is weighting moving average, I mean assigning weight for um, each data value used in forecasting. Thirdly is the exponential smoothing. Um, we already looked at a couple of them in the last video. So we're going to take a look at another one in a second. So the moving average, basically we compute the average of the most recent end data values. So sum up the most recent end data values and divide by the by n. And that's the moving average. And so you can write it as, let's say, moving average. Moving average three in sum up most recent three data values and divide by three. And so that's move, three period moving average, right? <clears throat> All right, so now let's take a look at uh, one of the examples. Um, let's say we have a, about moving average, smoothing methods and the moving average, a rascal drugs. Sale of a comfort brand headache medicine for the past 10 weeks. The rascal drops are shown on the next slide. Okay, like this week one all the way to week 10. And if rascal drops using three period moving average, meaning the three, three. Or you can write it as three and three period moving average to forecast sales. What is the forecast for week 11? So we look at the, first of all, look at the uh, sample data. So you got a 10 weeks of the sales number. Okay, now um, in order to calculate three period moving average, so for the first one, we're just adding 110, 115, 125. And we get um, 40, 350, right? So you get uh, 350 by three, that's another 116 by 0.7. And for the second one, you're adding these three numbers, right? 115, adding 125, 120, divide by three. And that's 140, adding 120, no, 240, and 20, 360 by three, that's, so the answer is 120, 360 by three, 120. So it's actually, right, so if you look, I want to calculate the next one, adding these three numbers, okay. 125, 120, 125, and divide by three, and get this. So as you can see, uh, the three period moving average becomes the forecast, right? So it mean, meaning that, that number becomes the forecast for next period. Um, also 120 becomes the forecast for the, for the fifth week. Uh, same thing here. So by the time we get to the um, last forecast, right? We look at this one. We're gonna take a look at adding those three numbers. So 115, adding 110, adding 130, divided by three. So that's 225, adding 130 by three, and then 355 by three. And that turned out to be 118. Okay. One, one to one decimal place. This is the last um, three period moving average. And that becomes the forecast for next period. And then this forecast for next period, uh, you usually use it as, a, as so the forecast number becomes the sales number. Uh, sales. Um, so in this case, we, we're assuming you know this becomes the, the sales for the 11th week. That's how it's 
uh, moving average walks in terms of for, uh, predicting for, in, for the 11 week sales. So this is moving average. And we also have another one called weighted moving average, meaning we assign weight for those um, three different periods and each one get different weight. So in order to use the method, we must first select the number of data values to be included in the average. Now we must choose the weight for each of the data values. And the general principle is, you know, more the more recent observation typically assign assigning bigger weights, right? Giving more weights for the newer data. For the older data, you use less weight. And also the total weight cannot be one. Right? So you sum up all three uh, all the weights, it should be equal to one. Okay, so let's look at uh, so for weight moving average for the last example here. If let's say we're assigning 20% for the first data, and 0.2 for the first data, 0.3 for the second data, and 0.5 for the third data, right now with a three period weighted moving average of 119. So, okay. And it will be slightly different from the uh, three period moving average is 116.7 and Three period weighted moving average is 119. So it does yield different results. Um, and also, uh, another important method is called exponential smoothing method. So this method is a special case of weighted moving average methods. We select only the weight for the most recent observations. The way for the other data values are completely automatically and become smaller as the uh, observations grows older. Um, as exponential smoothing forecast is way the average of all the observations in time series. So it's a way the average of all observations time series. So it's slightly different method. Uh, so for example, this is a typical um, formula we are used to calculate the exponential smoothing forecasting sales in this case. So FT plus one meaning is a forecast, F represent forecast, right? Forecast of the time series for the uh, period T plus one meaning uh, one period after time T. YT is actual value or observed value of the time series in the period T. So alpha represent the weight. So it's signed <coughs> alpha to yt, the actual value of the time series. And one minus alpha um, goes to the forecast uh, for the time t. Ft is the forecast for the time series of the period t for time t. Alpha is moving constant. Um, usually alpha is between um, zero and one. And also, if you look at this formula right here, if you expand it, right, like uh, this field is expanded, you're going to get f of t plus 1. Equal to alpha times yt plus ft. So basically distribute it. Um, minus alpha times ft. And uh, if you put those two together, right, ft, ft goes first, and you factor out alpha, so that's yt minus ft. That's what you see from here. So f of t plus one, you put f of t, forecast at the time t adding one, equal to forecast at time t plus Alpha is like the weight assigned to the difference between the observed observed value with the forecast value. Now let's look at the uh, example one more time. Rascal Drugs sales of comfort brand headache medicine for the past ten weeks at Rascal Drugs um, will be the same. Um, 
contacts with vascular drugs use exponential smoothing method to forecast sales, which value for the smoothing constant alpha gives better result. So either alpha is here equal to 21 or alpha equal to 28. See which one gives us the, the better answers or better forecasting accuracy. Now, um, there's still the data values here. Now, under alpha equal 0.1, meaning 1 minus alpha is 0.9. So, you, so the formula is alpha 2, alpha 1 equal to y, y1, right? Y1 is 1 to 10. Okay. And then, um, so forecast for, for y1 will be f1, f1 is 1 to 10 as well. So, f2 is 0.1 times y1, adding 0.9 times f1, and still end up with 1 to 10. Now, um, so this is f2, and y2, if you go back, y2 is 115, so this is y1, y2, y3, y4, y5, y6, this is observed sales from the sample by eight, by nine, and by ten. Okay. So now one more time here, um, point one has y, y two. Y2 is 115 from earlier slide plus 0.9 times 110, right? So we're signing more weight across the forecast and turn out to be 110.5. So we basically calculate all of these numbers one by one, okay? Using the uh, exponential smoothing method, um, even alpha equal 0.1. And alpha equal 0.8, very similar, all minus alpha equal 0.2. So now the first couple values will be the same, right? F1 equal to Y1, and we'll just say the same thing as 110. Y1 is 110. Go back here, Y1, 110. Y2, 115. Uh, if you get down to the second calculation, so 0.8 times 115 plus 0.2 times 110 give us 114. So starting on third numbers, all, those, all of those numbers will be different. We we'll try to use the mean square error to see which um, Smoothing constant gives us better better accuracy. Let's see how that goes. So this is mean square error. We just find the difference between the observed value and the forecast. Square that, and then you're going to do the average of those, right? So mean of square divided by nine. That's a, that's why it's called mean square errors. This is a square error. We sum up all the square error divided by. Uh, sample size 9, that gives us the mean square error. Uh, so, for alpha equal 0.1, so you, know, you do y, yt minus ft square that, so 115 minus 110, that's 5, 5 squared is 25, right? So basically, so this, you get 25, and then subtract these two, so that you get 210.25, so same thing for the rest of them. You get the rest of the square terms. You sum up that, you get 974.22. And divide by 9, you get mean square error. It turned out to be 108.25. Alpha equal 0.8. And, um, similarly, right? So you do yt minus ft and square that. You get 25, 25 for the first one. Second one, 125 minus 114. That is 11. 11 squared is 121. Same thing for the rest of them. So you just sum up all those numbers. Square terms, you get 847.52. Divide that number by 9, you get 94.17. Um, so if you look at these two numbers, this is smaller. So meaning smoothing constant equal 0.8 gives us better forecasting accuracy. This is better forecasting accuracy. So alpha is point eight better. So in 
know, in a real life scenario, you obviously have to compare, maybe do multiple calculations, see which one is the best among all of that. So we can keep changing alpha, right, from 0.1 all the way to 0.9, and then see um, whichever value gives us the best forecasting accuracy, and we we'll stick with that. All right, so now um, the next topic is to look at the trend. Let's look at the trend forecast or trend projection here. So the time series um, shows a linear trend, right, either upward or downward. And then we're using least square method. Um, if you, that's a linear trend, that means we're doing a simple linear regression here. A sim simple linear regression is based on least square method. So we learned from the earlier topic. So um, we basically determine the trend line by finding B0, B1. And so it's using this particular predicted y values. Simple linear regression goes by predicting y values for B0, B1, and X. Now here, the X becomes time T, right? Y, y has T, so B0 plus B1 times T. So this square it basically minimize the distance or the absolute difference between the observed data and the, and then the forecast values. And then the independent variable in it is the time period and the dependent variable. So independent variable is time t. Dependent variable is the actual observed values right, in our data set. So it's basically one t. So using the method of least square the, for the trend projection, uh, basically it's just a simple linear regression model. Um, so T of T represents a forecast for, for time T. And also equal to B0 plus B1 T. T is the time T. Okay. Uh, if you want to write F, T of T as F of T, that's okay. Uh, forecast of time T equal B0 plus B1 times T. If um, you want to use F T, no problem. It's equally good. B1 is the slope for the trend line, and B0 is the y intercept. Same thing, y intercept for the trend line. For all the simple linear regression model. And that's a that's a formula to calculate B0, B1, and uh, so B1, and this is our linear regression model. So B1 is a total of t times yt minus um, total of t times total of yt, right? square that over sample size, and over the denominator is total of t square minus total of t parentheses square over n. And you, you can also write this as multiply both top and bottom of the formula, original formula by n. Actually, we can come up with this, n times total of So this really, this really end to both terms. It goes here and goes here, and then for the second term we cancel out the n, so it becomes n times total of t times y t minus total of t times total of y t. Just try to um, simplify the formula, original formula, dividing by as denominator this times that with the n times total of t squared minus total of t or t squared. So this end the cancel, right? So this is alternative formula you can use. And also B0 is it's a simpler, right? Just uh, average of, of all the y values, observed y, y values. 
minus B1 times average of all the T values. And we can get B1 and B0. So let's look at a calculation from the uh, Auger's plumbing service. An example of the, the number of the plumbing repair jobs performed by Auger's plumbing service in each of the line last nine months is listed on the next slide. Forecast the number of repair jobs Auger's will perform in December using the least square method, meaning we're going to come up with a simple regression model. Using this T of T into the B0 plus B1 plus T. So the most important thing is to find out the B0, B1. And let's look at the number. So starting with the March all the way to November, so the jobs, actual um, um, plumbing service jobs. And right here, we just so first of all, we're gonna um, call the time t, right? So we assume March is the starting time, so time t equal to one on March, and April is two. And then by the, on December, on November, that so the time t will be will be not. Right? So so basically, call it call the time t as a numerical data, and then y t is given, right? It's binary. And we need to multiply those two. T times yt, you get x column. So 1 times 353 equals 353. 2 times 387, that's 774. You're also going to get the t square, and just square the t. So 1 square is 1, 2 square is 4. Right, so once we've done the prep work, so this is like prep work. I'm going to sum up each one of the columns. So when you sum up the first column, you get a total of t, 45. Second column is total of yt, 3,480. The third column is a product t and then yt, so it's 17,844. And the last column is a total of t squared, which is 285. Now once you have all this number ready, then you can just plug into the formula here. And before that, right, let's get an average of the other t. So average, you get a total t is 45 divided by 9. Okay, that will be um, 5, right? Average of the y, you get a total here, which is 3480 divided by 9. And get this number. And now the b1, you just get all the numbers from the previous slide, right? Total of a t times y t, that's 17,844. That's why we see this 17,844. And they are using this in some formulas. I showed you earlier. I'll show you how to derive that formula. Minus total of t times total of y t. As a numerator, denominator is n times total of t squared minus total of t square. And this is what they use to get all these numbers. Now one more time, when we throw in all the numbers, get 7.4 here. That's a B1, right? So the B0 equal to average of Y, 386.67, minus B1, 7.4, times the time, average of the time, which is five. And get this number. Now a T of T is B0 plus B1 plus T. So this becomes T of T equal to B0, that's 349.67, adding B1 7.4 times time T. Now we use, use that to make prediction about the December um, numbers so t of 10 right december the time t is equal to 10 so i am plug this number into the formula into the regression model so t of 10 equal to 349.67 adding 7.4 and then time t becomes 10. 
So we get 423.667. So this is like a predictive um, jobs, plumbing jobs um, in December, right? Using a, a simple linear regression model. Okay. And later I'm going to show you how to get this done in Excel fairly quickly process. And then um, let's look at same example, August, August plumbing service, forecast for December, month 10, using a three period weighted moving average with a weight of 0 0.6, 0 0.3, and then 0 0.1 for the newest to oldest data, respectively. Then compare this, term, uh, this month 10 weighted moving average forecast with the month 10 trend projection forecast see which one is close to the reality or which one is better off. Let's look at that. So meaning um, we are using the three period weighted moving average. So in this case, F10, so you're assigning 10% of 0.1 to September jobs, 0.3 to October jobs, 0.6 to November jobs. And then we get this number, which is 48.3. Compared to this um, from earlier slide, which is a trend, for, trend projection. And then let's see the overall picture here. So if you look at that, October is already 412 and then November 408. So I guess um, this should be a better estimate. Right? Under the trend forecast, this estimate is probably better. Because a three month waiting moving average um, is lagging because due to the positive trend component in the time series, um, the trend projection produced a better result um, compared to the uh, three period moving average. Now um, we can quickly go to the Excel on this. And open the Excel file. Okay. So this is the all the primary service trend forecast. So first of all, we're gonna um, do a simple linear regression model on this. So highlight the entire table, including title, right? Let's put the data and data analysis. I'm gonna go to regression. So you can select the input Y range right here. The Y value is basically uh, all the YT, right? That's Y value. Input X values highlight the time T. Okay. Now we include in labels, and we want to set a confidence level to 95%. That's okay. Okay, so output range, uh, we're gonna put it um so we're gonna put the output on B15. Okay, we'll go back. Now let's look at the outputs. Now, as you can see, we see the uh, Excel summary outputs. Um, so let's analyze it. So first of all, um, like this. So we get this um, mini uh, R squares is. 0.64, right? So 64.12% of variations in the in the um, FT is explained. Forecasting value is explained by the um, by time t. And it's overall uh, it's significant because the p value is really really small. So this is a good um, effective linear regression model. And then the most important thing is look at the coefficient. So the y-intercept. Yeah, it's 349.67. As you can see, on our four point, they run into three decimal places. So I'm going to keep it consistent. Those two are important. Highlight those. Okay. okay. So the so the regression model here, regression model, or like trend projection. So 
so it's predicted uh, jobs is equal to 349.67 having 7.4 that's the slope for time t so 7.4 Times t. So basically, we're using this um, regression model to get the forecast values here. So in this case, um, so then do b zero go down to b zero here. This is b zero. So I'm going to do absolute reference for b zero. The dollar sign from the bet. Dollar sign of thirty one. And adding. B1, B1 is 7.4. Same thing, we're going to lock, we're going to lock the cell in a second. Put dollar sign in front of C and dollar sign in front of 32. I'm going to multiply this by time t, right? Let's keep the time t floating. Okay, so we're going to get a, a projected um, forecasting values and get the rest of them. Okay. So um, it should be the same as what we have here. And we go down to the last one, right? 423.67, right? That's exactly what we have on the PowerPoint we did earlier, 423.7. If you run into one decimal place, 423.667. That's exactly the value. And go back, PowerPoint, and let's finish the, the work there. Okay. And our next step is to find the, the difference between yt and ft. See, and square that, right? It means uh, find the square difference. Okay. And uh, let's get that. d 30 minus e 30 not 30, 3. This number and it's E3. Okay, it's like that. Get this. We don't need that many decimals, so we're going to trim down to two decimal place. Okay. The center of this. And then this value is a full cast, right? Do that. Okay. And we're going to get the rest of them. And then you get a, get a good mean square error. See what that is. Do all of some here, look at that. So 1,800. Yes, I'm mean, going to divide this by, we have how many? Three, four. So let's not include it. Just let's not include the last one. Let's leave out the last one. The last one is unneeded. So I'm not going to calculate this, leave it blank. So I'm going to do um, first of sum of all those square terms. I have nine months. So dividing by nine. That is 200 mean of square error is 204.27. Right? So on a, and let's take a look at under uh, three periods moving average. If we go back to the PowerPoint, the weight we are doing is 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0 0.6. See which one is better off. Okay. So we'll go back to Excel. And now um Okay, we'll start with T here, right? So point one <coughs> multiplied by first number, right? Adding point three multiplied by second number, adding point six multiplied by the last number, the most recent number. Right? So get this, um, and we're gonna get all the forecast values out of this. Okay. As you can see, the last number is 408.3. That's exactly what we see from the uh, PowerPoint here. And let's find the, uh, the mean square difference here for those values. See which one is better off. Okay, so now um, in this case, we only have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 marks. So we do mean of square. So the parentheses, this minus this. Square that. Get this. 
Okay. And get all of some, right? We can get all of some here. No, I'm gonna, no, I'm gonna put it here. Let's do a quick sum. We don't want that. So mean square error, we're gonna do this sum. Sum all these mean of square errors, right? And then only two, four, six, seven, seven months that is available. So if you have a seven, as you can see, the mean of square errors is bigger here. So um, trend projection is better. It's more accurate. And that's why 423.7 um, or 423.67 will be a better forecasting value um, for the overcoming company. Okay.